Hey everyone, I'm Bueller from Comics with Bueller, and you're watching Comic Book Addicts. And that's Larry Hama right behind me. Very cool. Later. You're on mute, my buddy. It's okay. Hey. hey Let guys. me unmute myself. What's up, All everybody? Right. Welcome to Comic Book Addicts. I'm glad you're here for that reason, Caroline. This no is worries, episode man. 60. We got a, an awesome evening for you guys tonight. We got Caroline here with me. So glad to have her with me tonight. Um, but yeah, we have an awesome special guest this evening. We're going to be talking about an awesome book that drops this new comic book day this Wednesday. So I'm excited about that. Uh, what do you think about it, Caroline? Have you seen anything about Farrell? What do you think? So I have watched Trisha and Tony um, be on other guest shows and talk about Farrell coming up. And I'm very excited because even as Trish had mentioned herself, because dogs are kind of innocent and sweet and very trusting, stray dogs had one angle that was it kind of got you at the heartstrings but feral's gonna be a completely new dynamic because me as a crazy cat person knows cats don't play the same they ain't innocent they've lived exactly. a few lives they've been around exactly. the block totally, so it's a different uh, game different mindset yeah cats are mm -hmm. totally different than dogs They're to a lot play different. kittens and keep the mice at bay anyway yeah. But man, we have a lot of good good live streams. It's Monday. We also have the Monday night lineup. We got a lot of other good live streams. I wanted to mention real quick, Izzy kicked it off with his comic book weekly full list at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. He had uh, Sean from Overstreet Price Guide, which was awesome. I thought that was a really cool guest. Um, it, that was a fun live stream. We got comic book addicts at 7.30, of course. Tonight, we have Between the Lines at 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time. They have an awesome artist on there. He, his name is Laganza, and I was checking out his art on IG earlier and was blown away. It was fantastic. Uh, just amazing artists. So they got a really good guest tonight. Um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we got 22 comics with his top 10 alternatives. And uh, that's always it's always really cool to see what his alternative picks are to the hot 10 list. And wrapping up the night at 10 p.m., we got Cupo Comics with his Monday Night Raw books. So uh, if you've never checked these guys out, a lot of cool live streams going on tonight. Uh, that Laganza guy, he's an amazing artist. Um, I found him today for the first time, and his art just absolutely blew me away. So can't wait to see him on there. Um, but anyways, we have an amazing artist who is here to talk talk about this awesome title by the name of Farrell. Um but what do you say we go ahead and bring her out? Well, no, we got to shout out the channel. What am I thinking? We got to almost just, I almost blew it. We got to shout out the chat real quick. I don't want to miss anybody. We got Las Crucius saying good morning. Hooray and woohoo. What's up, Las Crucius from New Mexico? Thanks for coming out, man. What's up, buddy? I almost did it again. I almost started the show without shouting out the chat again. I've done that before. <laughs> it's all right. We just get so excited, man. But we appreciate yeah, you coming. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome night, y'all. We got my comic pops, Lorenzo, Indie Comics and Reviews. He says, hey, son. What's up, pops? Thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate you. Um, we got my comic book brother collecting with Durs. He says, hello, all my pimps and legends. What's up, Durs? Thanks for coming out, man. Wellbore, what's up, dude? Thanks for coming out, brother. We got, let's see, Dr. Von Hoot. Let's get Farrell up in here. Absolutely. That's what we're about to do. Can't wait. Uh, we got Marcus, my brother, Marcus circumstances. He says, Hey, thanks for coming out, Marcus. I appreciate you, man. We got Jimerton alive. This is going to be a big one. Yes, it is. This is going to be an amazing title. The, the ash can for this title was already making hot lists. So um, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be an awesome series. I can't wait to read it. Let's see, we got John from John's Comics with Kid. What's happening, people? What's up, John? Thanks for coming out, man. Let's see, we got Tony Commaverse. What's going on, Tony? He says, "Good evening, all." What's up, man? Uh, checking out his live stream this past Saturday. Uh, he actually did his. I think he did his. Him and a uh, DVH did the, did a big giveaway for their 300 subscribers. And um, I had to catch the replay. I felt really bad because I missed it live, but I did catch the replay, dude. Um, we got Seth Eleven. He says, sup, lady, fantastic. What's up, Seth Eleven? Thanks for coming out. 
We got Lady Fantastic saying, hey, everyone. Appreciate you uh, coming to hang out with me tonight, Caroline. I really do. No worries, man. Anytime. Comic Cap Collectible saying hello all. What's up, Comic Cap? Thanks for coming out, man. Giving through. Bottom Tier Collector. I was talking to him earlier. He says hello. What's up, Bottom Tier Collector? Thanks for coming oh, out. Thank you. Anyways, I think we covered the chat. If anybody else pops in, we'll uh, shout you out. But I definitely want to get to our guests. Um, my guest this evening is a talented artist, producing art for so many cool titles, such as Darkwing Duck, Lilo and Stitch, My Little Pony, Gargoyles, really too many to name, so, so many more. Um, along with partner Tony Fleek, she's responsible for the hottest animal series in many years by the name of Stray Dogs. Uh, back for the second time on Comic Book Addicts to tell us all about her hot new series that hits shelves in comic shops everywhere this Wednesday. Uh, Y'all help me welcome Trish Forstner. Hello. Trish. Hey, hey. How are you doing? Hey. Doing well. I am, I am having just the most issues tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. Well, hey, look, Jill. my camera's flipped. My camera's flipped. I'm about to just, I'm like losing it. Anyway. Yeah, I um, kicked you out a couple of times. <laughs> well, I had, um. I don't know what was going on with this thing, but I did a quick like little reset on the browser and that seems to have fixed it. But like now I just want to flip my camera around, mirror my camera. There we go. Is that gonna is that gonna stay? Still here to us. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it, it looks normal now. Whew. It was flipping me out. Anyway, how y'all doing? <laughs> doing well. Hey. Doing well. As you can tell, I'm going a little bit bonkers. But it's all right. Probably because we're we're three days away from the release of issue one of Feral, so I'm yeah. like losing my mind a little bit. Yeah, you got nerves. Oh, a little bit. I mean, <laughs> we did we we did pretty well. I'm hoping that we can we can sell out because I think we've got some pretty good plans for like reprint covers if they if if they come if they come. Right. Fingers crossed, y'all. If, if you build, if you bring it, they will come. Yes, but I've got this. You know, this was my preview wow. copy. I love it. it. Is. Yeah. I love it. Let's I'm so you glad up. you're doing cats. I'm so yeah. glad. <laughs> Plus, I learned how to draw cats like long time before I learned how to draw dogs. Yeah. So, um, you know, to draw the dogs first, that was um, that was something else. Because so here's my thing. That's I so get, cool. okay, all dogs go to heaven. What were your cat inspirations? Like Aristocats or things oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Like think Aristocats. Oliver and, like, and Company. All, Oliver and Company was both the dogs and the cats. Oh my god, um, I love it. Yeah. I love that Oliver one. and Company, okay. Like if you look at my Instagram, there is a drawing on there that I think of Dude. a feralized version of um Oliver? I call it of Dodger. Oh he looks <laughs> he looks insane. <laughs> but I also did one of Robin Hood, uh the Fox. I think I saw that. Yeah, I, I saw that one. one. And I did one These of Chip great. and Dale, who are my favorites anyway, but also they look good crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like I think that's going to be my new gen is making feralized versions. I'm calling them feralized to get over it. People who like venom, but yeah. like, you know, um, I think I, I'm calling it my venomized is just feralized versions yeah. of like just different cartoon characters. I think that's going to be yeah. like my jam. I think you I'm should digging. feralize a uh, tender heart from the care bears. That's a person. Oh my Absolutely. Lord. I was like, I wonder who Absolutely. I should do next. And I'm Tender trying to make heart. like a mini print set of like, yes! you know, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. But, that like, would be awesome. Could you imagine, like, the kittens from the Aristocats go bonkers? Yes. <laughs> yeah, or the Siamese ones, the jerks. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Siamese cats from uh, mm -hmm. uh, from Lady and the oh, Tramp. Lady and the Tramp, yeah. we uh, si Those yeah. ones, the jerks. I love them. Yeah. That would be so well, cool. Uh, I'm, that, so that's going to be, like, my jam. But I've done a lot of, like, cool. There's a lot of cool titles out right now that are, like, animals in peril, animals in, like, dark, murdery situations. It's true. And, mm -hmm. um. I love that Stray Dogs was kind of like the revival for that. You guys brought it back big time. Because yeah. I know that that was sure. like a thing. Like people always did like dark, you know, animal stories because it was cool. Like what was that series? Is it called Animosity? There was one. Um, I mean, but let's just think about like Orwell's, Orwell's Animal House. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, you talking about that's for real literature that's extremely symbolic and representative of social and political like uh, climates at the time. And they did it with a farmhouse. Yeah. 
So, like, you know, there's Animal Pound now. There's mm -hmm. uh, okay. Beneath the Trees. There's Man's Best. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's Feral coming. I mean, like, a lot of cool stories out now that have real dark undertones. We're just kind of in the thick of it. And I'm glad that people seem to be kind of attracted to them. Like, you know how, like, Stray Dogs, everything was kind of like the dogs were super innocent. Like, they were just very, like, oh, my God. They Nothing were. can harm these poor little well, sweet angels. Babies. Absolutely. Right. This cat story They're is, thugs, off the, aren't they? is off the hook. It's yes. off the hook. Like cats don't play though. They no, don't. We're, we're not we're not messing around. Like, okay, so think about it like this. In stray dogs, all of those dogs had like memory issues. They don't really remember too much. They're, mm -hmm. you know, um, everything was very contained. What is the scariest thing you can think of if you did a bottle story where your killer was right in the same house with you? being out in the world where anything can get you. So like we just decided to flip stray dogs completely around and do everything completely opposite. Nice. So instead of it being very cerebral, it's a lot of action, very in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of that. Lots of it. And Good. I draw like the funnest like poses for some of these cats. Yes. Just because, like, they can be so wild and cats are so, like, flexible. They're acrobats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was going to um, ask you, um, t tell us a little bit about the characters. What are what are some of the characters that we're going to be introduced to? Because I'm very cu curious. So in issue one, we're going to meet the three house cats. There's uh, Elsie, there's Patch, and there's Lord Fluffy Britches. Oh. <laughs> so Lord it. Fluffy Britches is the youngest, and he's kind of like the little brother, like the yeah. little brother. Um, Patch is kind of like, you know, just the middle child, you know, and then Elsie's the older one. Um, yeah. You meet them in a truck with other animals. They've been, they're driving away and we don't know why. And then it kind of goes straight into it. Um, even in the, like, in the preview pages that we kind of put out with, like, uh, with, with image, mm -hmm. you see the vehicle that they're in flipped over in the woods. Now they're out there in the wilderness. What's going to happen to them? Got it. You know? And so now they have to get home. Well, now they've got to get through a wilderness full of creatures that are infected with a mutant rabies virus that's, you know, turning them all crazy. Yeah. So we kind of got like a homeward bound walking dead situation. I like it. Nice. But to me, like, I feel like the action and, and like the, the, the beats... They all hit the way they're supposed to. Like, they make you feel the way you're supposed to. Like, you're like, holy crap. You know, like, you turn a page, you're like, oh, Jesus. You know, I wish I hadn't seen that or whatever. You know? so, and, and it only gets better, like, as it progresses. I have a ways. question. Like, the animals. <clears throat> if there are, are there animals they interact with that don't have the mutant rabies mm -hmm. in the wilderness? They do come out. They do um, meet different animals. You know, some have mm -hmm. it, some don't. Um, obviously the ones that have it, they have to run like hell. And can they tell? That's what, and that's the other thing. Can they tell the ones we, have it? We, of course, it, through the storytelling, um, they, you know, figure out ways to be able to tell. Ah, got and they have it. visual mm. cues, obviously, but like, you'll see, you'll, you'll get it once you start to see like what we're doing. Good. Um, you know, my favorite character in the whole first arc is is patch and he's slowly becoming my my favorite so far in in the second arc well actually no there's two different characters that are my favorite in the second arc so far and we're already working on issue seven so we're like working pretty far ahead we're planning this Very to be cool. ongoing so okay. like make sure you get it in your pool boxes and whatever um ongoing that's good ongoing. news so we're not like, you know, awesome. Stray Dogs was like five and done. And then we did the yes. dog days to fit some stuff in that we couldn't fit in the story. Well, we're trying to fit everything in. So it's a little bit, while there is more action, I feel like that it's still a little bit slower paced. So you can get like a feel, a mm -hmm. bit a bit more feel to how everything is. Um, okay. And like, I wanted more animals. Like, I want more animals, different animals. I want them to encounter everything along the way. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. You know, like you'll you'll see that we fit a bunch of different animals, not nearly as many as you could fit in the generic wilderness. Yeah. You know, like I'm sure there's bears and stuff and, and you know, whatever. But do we see any deer? A dead one. <laughs> okay, a we got a dead one. deer. All right. Cool. 
Ned Corp. Good start. You know, I love drawing deer. Like I love drawing any animal. Like all the animals that I learned how to draw, like all were like chibi and cute and small. Like you should see my favorite character. Actually, my favorite character. I have two favorite bad guys in the first issue. And you'll see uh -huh. them. One's a raccoon. One's a fox. And you will pick them oh. out right away by their expressions. And you'll be like, that's the one Trish's favorite. <laughs> you okay. know, one of them is actually in the promo ads. Let me find his face. You got to see okay. him. He okay. cracks me up so much. Yeah, we got to see this. And I mean, literally, like, you and know, you without said... giving too so much away from it, without giving too much away from it, you'll see which characters I had the most fun drawing. Because, like, look at this guy in the middle. Oh, wow. <laughs> Eek. That Dude. guy in the middle with the like arm hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> <my favorite>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't, like, don't pull any punches. This book does not pull any punches. Jeez, that's vicious. And yeah. so you're of um you said that you had a, a bigger role in terms of story um this time. Well, actually, okay, so Stray Dogs, right, was a complete story when it came to me. It was okay. pretty much, you know, he had it planned out beat for beat. This, we can kind of, we have an outline, but we can kind of fit things in, you know, like we talk to each other a lot. So like I'll throw ideas out okay. there and then sometimes we'll use them, sometimes we won't. You know, it's all part of being part of a cohesive team, which yeah. I think we really are. Yeah. Um, Tone, I'm pretty sure has, has interjected some of his, you know, thought process into it. Um, mm -hmm. I know I have issue six, I think you'll start seeing like where like because i watched a video <laughs> of like a bunch of cats that had like gopros around their necks and they were yes. filming like i freaking love those videos so we're yes. got a whole issue where it's kind of like that oh that's great dude that's really so, great like, like a silent issue yeah it's like a silent issue almost yeah. and oh, um cool. it's really like, creative but yeah. like you can see the that's world exciting. through the eyes of one of the infected animals jeez <laughs> and so it's like it it's bizarre and but cool at the same time. And I could see a spin-off series, like a mini, just about how did they get infected, you know, and like how it got to spread or whatever. Unless you yeah. guys you know, well, I don't that. even know like we haven't covered like patient zero yet. We don't know where we don't know see? the outbreak. We don't know the outbreak monkey. We don't know him yet. You guys gotta figure, you oh. know, these are Okay. This is the fun stuff. So I can see how that's really fun where you guys have a bare bones outline and then you can kind of flesh in with some of your ideas. That's mm -hmm. awesome. It's been mm -hmm. like super collaborative, super just like, you know, like even if I see that the story is getting a little too heavy, like I'll put something funny in one of the panels just to kind of lighten it up a little bit yeah. or like as long as it's appropriate. Like yeah. if the mood is supposed to be somber or heavy, then of course I won't. But yeah. like, uh, you know, if it's like been going on for a minute, I'll just have one of the little guys do something random in the background. Um, but you know, we haven't had any any thoughts of crossing over any stray dogs into this universe yet. Oh, um, you know, because right now we're kind of keeping them separated. Got to keep um, them separate. Even right. though I keep even though I keep drawing them in this style, you know. So. so um Jean Malo brought up a good question. So he has got a, now yeah. did you only do the A cover or did you do some of the other covers? Oh, we did like Tony and I did a bunch of the other covers. So like, um, we've got, I think I made a post on now it might've been on Twitter. I'm trying to think where I made the post, but I've got pictures of all of the covers for number one somewhere. <laughs> um, but we did a bunch. Like for number one, for instance, there's a A. I think we got A through H. No even. doubt. Um, like thirty just you guys. total. Yeah, there was like thirty five total covers. Um, That's yeah. crazy. You know, between uh, between us, the ratios and the shops, oh, and wow. um, that's not hideous compared to uh, you know some other ones. And given this economy, you know, I'm surprised that it took this. You know, that, that we did this well. Um, I really thank the shops for getting in on that. I really love their mm. support. And um, I, I honestly don't think it's good ones. Let me see here. Let me see what I can find. I have three. I have three out of the number ones that are my favorite. And yeah, show tell, us. What do you think? Okay, so we've got oh. the Stray Dogs Homage. 
That's on Tony's Tony and no. I. That's on Tony's that's... website. Okay. Yes. Very um, cool. Then we had somebody did a fright night. That's the Southern all Cartel. The... Yeah, that's the Southern Cartel. That's Look awesome. That. That that's so Arr. badass. All the cats and like yeah. in the clouds. That's Ghost freaking cat. badass. And then of course Bird City did this one to go with their stray dogs. Nice uh, version. And um, but uh, those were my three uh, favorites of them. So um, genre that, um, is a... the Southern Cartel you can order through Nirvana Comics, uh, Epicos Comics. There are several shops that are doing that you can order that one through. And then we've got like your A cover. We have an A virgin, and then we have um, the blank, and then of course mine and Tony's. These are the Night, Day, and Dawn of the Living Dead. Oh, I love the Dawn of the Living Dead ones. One is an actual one is all foil. Like that Ooh, one down the bottom is all foil. Let me see foil. Do you know who's Hell doing those? Yeah. Uh the foil is an exclusive, I believe. Um, and I believe it's for a convention, but don't quote me. I don't know why they're using it. Um let's see here. Yeah, CTE2, I believe. Oh, um, the got- E2. Okay. Yeah. So we've got Fright Night, we've got Sleepwalkers. Got a young did Jaws. I love it. Nice. Yeah, I think this was a Twin Peaks down here. Yeah. I love uh, it. Jaws. Rad, bro. And we've got a Nightmare on Elm Street. I think Dream Dream Warriors, I want to say. Yeah. And we got Mandy up here. That's for my local. Very um, cool. Third Eye. I'm getting uh, that from my that birthday. On their website. Oh, yeah? Yep. Cool. Yep. I ordered that one for my and birthday. Course, it oh, yeah. and then the Run the Jewels for Bird that City, cool. both of those. Um. Then here's some other shops. I'm not sure what the homage here is, but I know there's Outbreak. I think that's the witch. Gremlins, of course. Yeah, Outbreak, Ooh. yeah. I can recognize that. But you can kind of see where the art kind of shifts. Oh, the feral. <laughs> yeah, look at that feral one. <laughs> it's me, Johnny. I love I it. I like uh, <laughs> this one down here, too, with the tombstone. That one cracks me up. Yeah. And there's Thinner. Right. And is that fun what? of like making fun of the ghoulies or something? Oh no, that's an actual like it's a return of the living dead. Oh, is it? Okay. I think it's like a sequel. Oh, it's like a sequel to something. That's hilarious. And then here's some more. Um we got a something is killing. We got a pet cemetery. John Saw. Comic comic shops anywhere. You should be yes. able to find them at your local comic shop. Yep, comic shops anywhere yep. will have at least the A and B cover. The B cover is the Dawn of the Living Dead. Um, yeah, yeah, so they're, um, yeah, it's a standard comic shop. They're dropping this Wednesday, so they're not Wednesday. out yet. Yep, oh, I yeah. actually got my comps in like last week and I'm like been sitting on them. Like, I show them off <laughs> my, I'm hoarding them, they're like my prize. Um, you know, but in the meantime, while that's happening, I still have you know my Disney covers coming out. I still have, I did one for Man's Best, which came out. Look how cute. Oh, you know, cute they are. Right oh yep. yeah, that's super Plus adorable. I like I learned how to make a space background. That was cool. That's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that one turned out great. That one was really good. Um, yeah, for sure. Oh, and so we've got you know all of those things happening. Um, I've got a couple signings coming up. Uh Saturday I'll be at my local one of my locals collector's corner in Parkdale, Maryland. Um, for from 12 to 5. Then next week, I'm driving to All Yeah Comics in New York with Tony. Tony's flying out here. We're going to drive up there. Then we're going to drive back and then head to Third Eye Comics the next day for a signing. Wow. Nice. Then we will part ways. And then on the 13th, I have a signing of 13th of April. I have a signing at Dreamers and Make Believers in Highland Town, Maryland. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And that, wow. that shop is really cute, really local place, like super into the neighborhood. Um, lots of neat programs. They support lots of cool charities. I think we might even do something for our local animal charity, Barks. Awesome. Um, you know, and, and of course, with Stray Dogs, we did a lot of stuff with animal charities. I did, um, you know, Show Your Soft Side. We donated money to Champ, uh, the, the Chesapeake Area Alaska Malamute Protection Program. We did yeah. a lot stuff with them so like i want to find i know we have a cat one around here so 
Have you ever thought about maybe doing like a, um, a variant cover or cover specifically of like, hey, this the proceeds for this cover will go to that, you know? I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure that we did something similar in the past that was like 10%. Like that shop I was just saying, Dreamers and Make Believers, they took yeah. 10% of their proceeds from the sales of Feral to donate to um, Barks. So, I mean, like, yeah, that's awesome. shops are doing their own thing, and, yeah. you know, I, I help support that For in sure. a way. So, I don't necessarily feel like I need to order 500 copies of a book to donate the proceeds to charity because it sure. is a little, in, in this economy, it's a little expensive to do that. Plus, I don't have the capacity yeah. to ship things. You got yeah. the, uh, the sketch you did for C3 raised a lot of money last year as well. That, that did really well. Yeah. Um, it just seems it's really cool to see so much of the things that you actually care about as an authentic person come through in the work. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I try and like be as real as I can, you know, is and, and be as real as I can to, you know, I am with you guys how I would be to anybody, you know, uh, I just like that. I think that that's cool. People um, value that. They appreciate it. Um, yeah. They, in a world of lots of facades and masks, it's good to meet people that don't have them or, you know, try to wear as few as possible because Absolutely. you try to be genuine. I'm well, you mean, like, you can't, and I always say, like, you can't, you don't have trouble keeping track of the truth. So, like, if I'm, if I'm going to tell you something as a person, that's how I'm going to tell it to everybody. You know what I mean? I, the only thing I keep secret or nothing hardly, I tell everybody everything. I'm like, ugh. Even plot points to like this, this, I'm just like, oh no, wait till you get to issue three. You're going to really, you know, freak out. Yeah, Most yeah. People, like issue two's got some banger beats into it. I can't wait for people to get this thing in their hands. I've been sitting on it for so long. It's just like, blaze. Yeah. <laughs> I can't happen. wait to read it. Yeah. And if all goes well, you said there, there could possibly be additional printings if all goes well. Oh yeah. I mean, shoot. Nothing is out of the, out of the realm of possibility. You yes. know, I mean, as That's soon as it news. starts hitting the shelves and people read it and they like it, early reviews look good. You know, people that have that have had a chance to read it and put it up on their sites, um, you know, they seem good. Like a lot of people aren't aren't really, you know, crapping on it. Yeah, they're not because you know how like people are I mean, assholes. <laughs> you know, like I I also do a show on Mondays. I, I watch a show on Mondays called Cover Lovers, where you literally judge an entire book based on what the cover looks like. Yeah. Ah. And art is like everything else; it's very subjective. So, very like you know, and and what might be my cup of tea might not be yours. So, if somebody does a really abstract piece, somebody might not like it, or you know, mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like, as an artist, you're like, ah, oh, I could probably do that better. But like, you know, the, the motto is no artists were harmed in the making of that podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, because genuine respect to every creator. Um, but if you're a collector and you buy certain covers based on what they look like or who did them, then you know, that's the show, that's the show for you. And I think that, you know, every artist should be able to accept a little criticism. And so yeah. I do I try not to wear that on my sleeve because like when when i get criticism about what this book is or like mm -hmm. the next issue or somebody saying we went too far i'm just going to be like no <laughs> it gets tough to separate when you put so much of yourself into a piece right yeah i can see that mm -hmm. and that's why oh, it hurts i'm not like a i'm not i i get imposter syndrome super bad so i think like, a lot of smart chicks do so don't don't feel like you're unique in that. I think a, there's a lot of, and, and there are guys too. I just know I work in a field where a lot of successful females question their legitimacy and mm. they shouldn't. I'm and you like, shouldn't either. I hear like sometimes, like when Stray Dogs kind of went off, like initially, even its initial sales run, I was impressed because I was like, man, it has to be, you know, it was all 100% the writing. It had to be because the story was very enchanting. But you need both pieces. Yes. You need the art and you need the the story to be to be good. Us, us as consumers. Tony's out here doing look. Tony's out here doing too much and make me look bad. So like you know. No. <laughs> us as creators by by getting your content and by purchasing these properties are saying you, uh, Trish Forstner, deserve a seat at the table. Okay. 
You're here. You deserve yeah. it. You've earned it. And Absolutely. we are here to buy your products. And even like oh, yeah. like getting nominated for the Eisner and getting nominated for the Ringo and getting Ooh. nominated for. It's got to be such a good you know, reinforcement. It really is. But then, you know, you have other people who are like, I've been in this business for 20 years and I've never had a book hit off. Like that's that. not that's not for you to but feel like, guilt about. I'm like, yeah. well, then I guess I should feel pretty yes. okay about that, you know? Yes, you should. Absolutely. And you, should, you know, hey, I'm, I'm doing things that people haven't haven't done that have been at this for a hot minute. That's a testament mm -hmm. to your creativity and to the new fresh things you're bringing to the the comic game. And um, people need more people like that. We need Agreed. this. Absolutely. So us buying your prod products are saying we need more Trish Forstners. Well, I not you, that, you, uh, of you, you know, we need you. We need you to make shit. I <laughs> think that, you know, as, as we progress through feral too, like as long as it's, you know, cause I still do my day job. I still have my day job because, you know, self publishing is hard. And, you know, even though we're being published mm. through image comics, it's still akin to self publishing. It's indie. in a way. Yeah, it's because it's indie. You're basically doing everything. You know, you're setting up your whole file yourself. You're doing, you're doing your editing. You're doing all of that stuff on your own, and so it's tough. Um, so of course, you know, stretches out that pay period. <laughs> uh, so you know, I still have to have the day job to kind of you know make ends meet for now, and you know maybe who knows if it does well. Who knows yeah, will happen. I mean, yeah. in a in a world, if you could have the things that you wanted would you like to do this as your job yeah. oh yeah comics Shoot. yeah that's great I did mean, you ever see that like as trish forstner as a 15 year old kid or a 20 year old or a 25 year old did you see oh, honestly, being in comics? I, no i mean like i always thought you know like breaking into illustration would be like the toughest thing ever i mean i started mm -hmm. out as a fan artist for you know i mean everybody does everybody who draws is a fan artist so they they, they draw what they like and I always drew cartoons because I was a huge fan of cartoons. I always wanted to be an anim animator and work for Disney. That was like my dream. When I was asked 10 year old me, 15 year old me, even 20 year old me, you know, I wanted to work for Disney. And be when I was in high school that I figured that that would never happen. So I'm like, okay, let's refocus. Let's go into, you know, general pop and work at a grocery store for a while, you know, work at, mcdonald's and you know have three jobs and start working your way up um that stuff progressed pretty naturally and then you know i kept doing the hobby getting better getting my name out there and then q 2012 i think when i met tony the, for the first time and then you know um we kind of hit it off and then you know um even like Stray Dogs, what was that, 2018, I think, 2017 when I met him. And then, you know, he pitched me the story for it. We worked tirelessly to get it out there. I mean, I almost died when Dog Days was coming out. So, like, <laughs> I had to be in the hospital for a minute. It was crazy. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, I, the, the last issue of Dog Days, like, the last, like, five pages needed to be done on, mm -hmm. on the Victor story. And I was in the hospital because they thought I was going to die. So, uh, oh, no. he had to finish it. Oh, it turns out, spoiler alert, I didn't die. <laughs> I lived. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, a, a, a major surgery later and then like a month to heal. And then I was back to kicking it again. Yes. Glad that you're with us. Yeah. yeah of I mean, but thankfully that, you know, it all worked out and stray dogs, Stray Dogs, I think, is an anomaly. and But I hope that Feral is a good, like, sophomore, you know, um, like a good sophomore comeback, not like a slump, not not one that's going to flop. So um, John Malo has a question. If he wants you to send, if he wants you to sign books that he has, Stray Dog books or Feral books, how could he get you to sign them? Um, well, I don't necessarily give my address out you know so that people could just send them but i am going to be at a few shows this year so maybe we could you know meet at a at a few shows that are you uh, planning on attending any conventions any cons this year 
see. I have C2E2 planned. Uh, that's April, what, 26th through 28th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. I have uh, Three Rivers Con in P Pittsburgh uh, mm -hmm. the first weekend in June. Mm -hmm. um, August, I'll be in Seattle for Everfree Northwest. Um, that is a My Little Pony convention. I still, I still love my ponies. Still you love your ponies? My love my ponies. Um, let's see. September, Baltimore Comic Con. Um, and then December, Ocean City Comic Con. And Ocean City is in Maryland. It's on the Eastern Shore. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And that's actually a weekend for the first time. Like they used to only have one day. Now they're doing Friday and or Saturday and Sunday. I'm like, so yeah. I would say to John, um, we've got a lot of people in this community, John. And I think a lot of there'll be some folks that'll be at some of these things. And if yeah. we talk and, you know, get this comedy is or this community is awesome. And we could probably find someone to help you make that happen that we oh, know yeah, are going to the con. And for we sure, can get your books sure. to them, and Trish will do and the old sign a Rooney. You could, you could do it the way I'm doing it. I'm I actually um, for myself as a birthday present, or actually, actually I'm going to get my girlfriend <laughs> to pay. Oh for yeah, it. order from Third um, Eye. We're but be yeah, there Third Eye Comics. You are able to get an exclusive signed by her and Tony um, yep. for a very good price. So check that out, Third Eye Comics. That yeah, Third Eye Comics is doing uh, an exclusive for me uh, of Mandy. Uh, the poster Mandy. Um, mm -hmm. and Tony and I will be there on April 7th to sign them all. So, when are you going to the UK, huh? Oh my gosh, I don't have a you passport. <laughs> hey, Doc Von, uh -oh. who are you gonna be willing to be her UK sponsor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, we'll get you a passport because maybe you're gonna need to go international soon. Oh man, I want to go, like, there are so many places I want to go. Oh. People are saying Heroes Con. I've been to Heroes Con. Um, I want to. I want to go back when I actually don't get COVID because I got COVID the last time I was at Heroes Con. Not good. And uh -oh. had to leave and had to leave early. Like I, I had it for the first time, and I was like, "Why am I dead? Why do I feel dead?" And it was like at night. It was like the Saturday, the Saturday yeah. evening. Uh, we were leaving the show, and I could not keep my eyes open. I'm like. I literally feel like I'm going to die. And so we went to a Brazilian steakhouse up there and like, you know, we're eating and I'm like, I can't, I don't want to eat nothing. I'm dying here. <sighs> so the next morning we ended up leaving our, I couldn't drive at all. I literally couldn't stay awake. So it was an eight hour drive back <laughs> with me unconscious. In the past oh, seat. wow. You know, that was rough. yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. But I would love, I would love to come down to um, Heroes Con again. That was a good show. Like, I mean, the the day that we had when we were there, or the the time that I had when I was there, because I think we went with um, the Hero Initiative, and we donated some, you know, money, some proceeds to them cool. as well. Um, nice. Yeah, I mean, like we, I've done, I've done a lot of stuff again for a lot of charities. Hero Initiative. Uh, I did a thing for them last December that the, for a auction they had of a Superman cover that I drew crypto on, of course. Uh -huh. because why? So I have a question. Let's just say Trish Forstner does have her passport. Where is she going first? <laughs> oh gosh, where am I going first? With if I had a passport, where would I go internationally first? Yeah, yeah. where are you going? Probably Japan. Them Seven Eleven runs. They look so good. Wow. <laughs> they look so good. I mean, I, I see what I, you know, travel on like TikTok, but like, you know, Japan sounds like a cool place. Uh, Korea looks beautiful. Um, you know, okay. Australia looks insane as long as their animals stay, you know, a respectable distance <laughs> yeah. away. Australia's yeah. different. It's different. Uh, uh, so, yeah, lots of cool places. I mean, the world is a huge place. And I've not seen, I've only seen, you know, this much of it. Yeah. I, um, I did a semester abroad in England and went to a few places in Europe and I had wow. a great time. Um, That'd be cool. That'd be I, really cool. I suggest everybody to travel, go to a place where you do not feel like you're at home because that's, it's always good to be a stranger in a strange land at least one time to understand what it's like and to immerse yourself in a culture that's completely different. Yeah, mm. of course. 
I, I did just, see you went to uh, Disney Disneyland this past year, though, right? Disney, yes, Disney World is literally the only Disney place World. I can go where I can travel around the world and not leave the United States. <laughs> yeah, just I love it there. fun. I love it there. It's like one of my favorite places to go. Just you know, I don't have to always be doing something. I could just sit and and just immerse myself in the environment for a minute and just get re-energized. It's so creative there. Yeah. I took my, you know, I took my drawing pad last time and I was sitting in the courtyard, just kind of uh, of the hotel, scribbling, you know, Chippendale and Stitch and, you know, talking oh, to people. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Um, so, yeah, I like doing that stuff. Um, and then, of course, any of the rides. Take me on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. That freaking ride is my favorite ride in all of Disney. Which one? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. I don't think I've been on that one. So, what is it like? It's a, it's kind of like Space Mountain in that you kind of, you know, you're in like a... Like I've a done that one. Like, it's kind of like Space Mountain in that you're in the dark. But it launches backwards, and the cars oh, wow. themselves spin around. And there's this huge projection around the whole thing that plays, like, a, a scene. Like, you know, you're, you're with the Guardians, and you're yeah. facing off against some, like, evil guy in space. Yeah. And, of course, you hear all the soundtrack. There's 80s music blaring and it's just like one of my favorite rides it's kind of like i'm trying to think like it takes the best parts of space mountain and any like major projection show and Mm -hmm. just jams it into like one cool ride like Like a visceral experience yeah it's very neat and i got on tron the last time i was there too the tron run. yes it's fun um but it's very short so like the ride is like maybe a minute 30 and Mm. like but you gotta wait like two hours in line to get on this tiny little ride but the whole experience is really neat um so i mean like if you're really into tron as a you know as an aesthetic just like you know because i mean like tron's tron's got its own following you know it does it's a cult classic and it does have an aesthetic um that is really rad and it's even like the like that movie that came out not too long ago with the cgi jeff bridges that was really bad um but even that movie really wasn't horrible. Like I don't know. I didn't hate it. Uh, it's I saw funny. the yeah. I saw the new Tron that that was recent. But I think there's been two new Tron movies, right? Wasn't that like a series or something? I don't remember. Like the Tron universe is kind of like it's a thing. You know. I just don't know about it. Uh, I I don't give it the side eye. Not as much as you know anything else because i mean everybody all the fandoms are they got their own quirks and they're great in their own ways you know for sure i've just been so i'm a big tolkien fan and there's a tolkien world you know and i've just now started rereading um dune and i realized there is a frank herbert world dude there's a a friend who is super in so into dune okay so it's good back to the early days of the internet go back (laughs) to the early days of the internet and like your first internet experiences being in these like uh you know these anthropomorphic like where people draw animals doing stuff um this friend of mine like she had a whole like her whole world was in dune yeah she had different characters that she made up and but she would put them in the on the like lion king fan art page in her they're like dune outfits and stuff so she was like crossing fandoms back then it was fantastic love it yeah, and awesome. I love like now that we're all professionals, that we're all kind of professional artists. We're like, we look back on those days and we're like, what the hell? <laughs> what does she do now? She draws um she draws um illustrations for different companies that commission her to do stuff. I yeah. mean, she does like cards and uh, neat stuff like that. Uh, not like um, you know, oh, I don't charge for signatures, uh, Jean, unless uh, or unless unless it's, they're being graded. Um, if you take them to CGC, then I charge. Um, you know, because they're getting their money. So I mean, yeah, right. makes sense. Um, you mentioned music a minute ago. What do you listen to music when you create? Or I um, listen to all kinds of stuff. Right now, I'm listening really? to Final Fantasy VII uh, remake score, and uh, Final I Fantasy love um, Donkey Kong um, uh, Country soundtrack and the soundtrack to. Um, the Zelda link, the um, what's the one that was in the new form? It's not Twilight Princess, the one that came out in GameCube. Oh, was that Majora's Mask or whatever that was? No, yeah, it was yeah. a Zelda GameCube. 
Um, Wind Waker. Ocarina. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So the I thought soundtrack. You were maybe Ocarina of Time too. Yeah, I thought that yeah. for a second. Oh yeah, soundtrack to any of the Zeldas are great. So I, like I love soundtracks like that. Even yeah. like even the Tolkien soundtracks, the the Lord of the Rings movie. Girl, I know. Anya okay. gets on some of them pieces, and I'm just like, oh girl, go girl. I'm like, I don't care. I, I'll listen to them all day. Yeah. Um, but I bounce, I bounce between like video game soundtracks, movie soundtracks. Um, you know, just random like lo-fi beats, whatever, focus music, and then like K-pop. <laughs> so I bounce all over the place. Yeah, and we need Katie for you. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a community member called K-pop Junkie. Yes, yeah, my girl. Yeah, yeah. She uh she's she likes the K-pop. She also let's talk about the something I forgot. Animation and how it doesn't get the respect it deserves. Animation uh -oh. is always labeled a children's medium. So they yep. automatically downgrade whatever me whatever movie or or medium whatever media has been produced in animation like look at bluey for instance that cartoon hits on so many levels it hits people who need to hear that stuff it hits adults it hits kids you know and automatically people automatically assume it's a kid's show because kids can understand it but there's a lot of adult themes in it, it deals with loss grief um you know things that you might have remembered as a kid that, that hit you just now uh, that show is very deep for for being 15 minutes long each episode or eight minutes long each episode it hits mm -hmm. this is deep um barbie look at the barbie movie everybody oh my god like a film, but like damn that's it was profound know, af it really yeah, was it really was um and that and that wasn't like animation per se but yeah. like you know you look at most pixar movies where they have like a real deep message you know, um, about equality or acceptance, things like that, but it's a kid's movie. So, you, you know, yeah, I don't. So that's the thing. I feel like so many great things could be explored using animation that we don't because it's been labeled a quote unquote child's medium. And it's, or, not. you know, like visual mm -hmm. effects stuff too, like for like superhero movies and stuff like that. Automatically, those movies are meant for kids because they're superhero movies. Girl, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> just stop. It, you know, everybody's going to watch them. They're definitely worth... Maybe they're not Oscar winner pieces. They're not like, oh my god. But I mean, the animation is an art form is not as respected as it should be. Especially right. like, if you get into like 2D drawing, where it's like hand-drawn, mm -hmm. less CG, but like even CG animation, I'm not, I'm automatically not including anything AI generated in any discussion because AI, fuck AI. Yeah, it's not yeah, real. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Um, it's trained on, it's trained on the backs of the greatest. It artists. can't, it can't create anything original. It's based on algorithms that, uh, of, of things that already exist. So it's incapable of creating something wholly new and unique. And the whole thing is if you oppose it, if you oppose AI in like art, like digital mediums, mm -hmm. then you have to oppose it on every other front. You cannot say that AI voice generation is good, AI music generation is good, AI text generation writing instruments are good. None of it's original. It's, none of it's right. original. It all has ethically muddy. Yeah. It's murky. Know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, agree. Without getting too deep. Without getting too deep. Here right. I am on my soapbox, like boring the shit out of your people. No, don't. <laughs> I, we asked, you know, because I'm like I said again, the Tolkien thing. I feel like they could do Silmarillion uh, animated the cut to the content to some of the Tolkien stuff that's you know not been addressed, and it'd be wonderful, amazing. I had to read that book three times before I even understood what it meant. It's a chunk. I did too. Yeah, I did too. It's a yeah. chunky boy. I was yeah. like, oh. My brain, I read it in high school. but yeah. I had to like, yeah, I read it in high school, but then I didn't understand it then. And I tried again because I joined a uh, Lord of the Rings, like, I was a Lord of the Rings person, not uh, a Harry Potter person. Like, I was thank never you. like a Harry Potter Lord of the person. Rings is for grown ups. I, but I was like in the Lord <laughs> of the Rings, and so there was like, I have friends that wrote in, like, wrote in like fan 
like fanfic sites and stuff. So I would read their stuff and they're like, oh, I got this reference from here. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh, let me look again. Oh, shit. I just read this paragraph six times and I still don't know what it means. Like, okay, I feel stupid. Yeah, it gets a little oh, weird. With, uh, it made me feel uh it made me feel uneducated. <laughs> every Iluvatar and the Inalindale and the Valar and all that. Yeah, baby. Yeah. But, it's, it. but it's so good. Like medieval times is like my jam. So anything that's in that like kind of genre of like comedy, Oh, I eat it up. Eat it up. Leave no crumbs. Mine. Thank you. I know. Yeah. That's good. Harry Potter though, not so much. Uh not that I'm not into like wizards and witchcraft. It's just, you know. It didn't was, hit. It didn't hit just, me. No, it didn't hit. And I think those two were hitting, like, Lord of the Rings was ending right as, like, Harry Potter was kind of coming in. and Movies, but, like, yeah, Lord of the movies, Rings. Like, like, Lord of the Rings has been around forever. It's yeah. such a big universe. And then it's, like, to try and compare Harry Potter to that. Not that I won't, don't want to give Harry mm-hmm. Potter its own place and its own just desserts. Because, look, my little brother was of that generation and loved it. And so many people love it, including adults. Yeah. But, sure. but let's bring in the Star Wars. Uh, let's bring in the Star Wars book universe. No, man. Now we've got a whole new thing. <laughs> a whole new <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> and and it's really in depth. I mean, it's a whole universe and things. But I'm an asshole who likes the Tolkien. <laughs> you know. Um. But yeah, hey, you d- like what you like. Again, everything is subjective, and everything like I love that people. People shouldn't give other people shit for collecting what they like or doing what they doing what they like. Oh, like, I definitely like giving people stuff, but then it's like they give it right back because well, I was gonna say you have to be accepting like if you, nobody's wearing bulletproof armor around here. Yeah. So, you know. Nobody's drawing Dune character crossovers, but it's just Nothing. like, dude, I would love to see that. I would pay money to see her old Dune art. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that like and her old Dune art was more like just it was mostly character focused. Don't so care. She, like invented this little character i think his name was Cade, and i fell in love with the character i didn't know his story at all but it was so cute um and he had yeah. blue eyes and the whole like you yeah, know, yeah spicing was, it up oh, i was like look at this guy yeah and yeah then there was like some like fix that went along with it this was so long ago this is on places that don't exist on the internet anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the deviant like, art kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, the old like old deviant art back before it turned into an AI generation machine. And, right. Yeah. You know, now much. we have now nobody can. I haven't posted on deviant art in like 115 years, but you know, I'm a 25 year member of that site. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the stuff that was coming up though when I remember early internet. This these were the the outlets that people had. <laughs> Deviant art, the Lion King fan art archive, which is still around. That's awesome. I might need to go and see that because I didn't know that was a I, thing. My archive, I think, is still <laughs> on that site, like back from like, like the early 2000s. You want to see points that'll make you cry? Trish Forstner's Lion King fan art. Yeah. No, not bounty points. I, that's a place I wanted to forget. No, oh, but, no. You need to no, bring I don't want to. You know how like, when somebody brings up like a picture of you from when you were a child? And you're like, like yeah. And you're like, oh, shit. I was a goober. I was such a nerd. Yeah. yeah or you look of, at the shit you posted from 10 years ago and you're like. I have a friend who keeps bringing up crazy. the fact that I, used to, that I used to be a huge NASCAR nerd. And I drew oh, wow. the, the, and I was a member of this Lion King fan art archive website. So, of course. I drew the NASCAR cars paintings <laughs> on cats, and I called them NASCATs. I was no. so nice. That is <laughs> you had, did you have a Dale and Earnhardt cat? Oh, I had man. a Dale Earnhardt Jr. cat. A oh, Jeff my Gordon God, cat, dude. Oh, a Terry, see, the, a Terry the Tiger cat. <laughs> we're both in Tennessee. NASCAR's huge in Tennessee. So. Yeah, we're both from I mean, Tennessee. I, mean, yeah, I still gosh. like NASCAR, obviously, but I mean, like, I don't, I don't love it now because they changed all the rules and like it doesn't make any sense anymore. Dude, yeah, but, could we do feral versus NASCATs? Oh, yeah, yeah, Please. that would be wild. Like, I even designed like the, <laughs> the cat faces specifically, like the eyes on the Monte Carlo because they look like cat's eyes. I, I'm telling you, I put too much thought into these. Oh these cats. man. Nice it sounds so good. Yeah, it was terrible. Well, <laughs> it was I mean, it sounds kind of like the Pony Stark thing, which I, I think is amazing. Oh, the there Pony Stark thing went accidentally viral too. Like, like Robert Downey Jr. had posted it on his Facebook page. 
I mean, or his people must have posted on his Facebook page, and damn. and then people loved it. But he didn't give me credit, so like I didn't get credit for it. Oh, whatever. Oh, Got to teach people how to cite their sources, but whatever. My yeah. signature was on it. Source <laughs> citation. Yeah, exactly. Taylor would take the money to cat with a mullet. So freaking good. Like I, I don't know. Um. Oh, there is a cat with a mullet in um, in in Farrell. His name is Lord Fluffy Bridges. He has a mullet. He has a there mohawk. Like he has like business up front and party in the back. Like you know. Oh, that's the really good type of mullet. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, I like what? him. He well, he's a little bit zany. That character. Nascat is was a gimmick. It really it was. was it really was. It was. Sorry, terrible. I had to take a call. Oh, You're good. it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I'm just going on and on about my hideous past. <laughs> no, no. I think so. Listen, Jim, uh, Jimerton Alive says this NASCAT gimmick sounds like a concept with legs to me. <laughs> they should have done it. Like, could you imagine it be like a like on um like how they do the puppy bowl? Bro, like just put like a little pay bunch for it. Oh, yeah. pay for it they yes. just put a bunch of little bandanas on some cats and let them run around in mm -hmm. uh in a little pen. I'd get drunk to that. Oh, so good. I'd just be I, like, "What lap are we on? The yeah, cats yeah. are on level, or the cats are on lap three hundred. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> they, they started fighting Izzy with has, each other. <laughs> yeah, no, they're chasing the mouse. <laughs> Izzyverse NYC has a question. He was wondering what famous cat would survive in the feral universe. Oh my god. Do you know I've also like thought about which internet cat would live on? Grumpy Who? cat would live on. Grumpy? How I would like Grumpy. Heathcliff, um, you know, uh Garfield, yeah. Felix? I think the number stuff. two, I think the number two FOC variant is a Garfield. Don't quote me, but like that keep your amazing. eyes peeled for the number two FOC variant because I need it is a Garfield one. Cool looking. I think it's Garfield. Um yeah. so like I all love of Garfield. The the main cats are, or they look like Garfield cats, and our friend Amy Memberson did them. Um, she also draws for like My Little Pony, so we got a lot of our pony friends to do covers for us. Um, That's awesome. I also That's got awesome. a bunch of cat lady. Well, I got a bunch of lady artists. Yes. To draw cat covers. Yes, because I'm calling them my cat lady covers. Dude, this is a whole demographic. <laughs> like, I represent the crazy cat lady demographic and I'm here for it. Like, we're going to come Dude, out and try. One, one of my favorite artists um, is a friend, Andy Price, who draws for ponies, but he also does, like, kick-ass horror stuff. And um, he has cats. Like, lots of cats. And a lot of them are named after like Dracula, yeah. different, like Bella Lugosi was one of them. And I forget like the names of all of his cats, but like, you know, his cats are great. Um, he had a Morticia, uh, you know, he loves his cat. My friend had a cat named Waffles. I really liked that name for a cat. Waffles. I just, I don't know why I just like, I haven't had a cat since I was a kid, but my sister has cats and she also feeds the feral cats in a colony near, near where she lives. So like oh. she has like seventeen cats. So if I ever want to go see a cat, I just go over to her house. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I've I watch a, a lot of internet life. cats too, like TikTok cats. T Surfer, mm -hmm. I love him. Dude, cats are the greatest Walker. creatures. They bring me so oh, much joy. Yeah, they're there hilarious. is a cat named Waffles on the internet too on the TikTok who like likes likes to fight with the other the spare human and doesn't like the dog. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they fight, but this cat only likes the the lady who lives. <laughs> I was like, that's typical. We love yeah. this cat. This cat's doing hey, I got a thing. question for you. Mm -hmm. What is the what's a character that you haven't gotten to draw yet that that you would love the opportunity to draw one day? Like on a professional level. Yeah, on a professional level. Like someone else's character, huh? I yeah. mean, I don't know. See, I, like, I want to try my hand at drawing like a Marvel character, not just like an animal, like like actually putting in the work to learn how to draw the characters. Have you done them. humans? Have you tried humans? Yeah, I have. Uh, I have, but they never look like who they're supposed to look like. They always look like like caricatures, almost. Yeah. Or like anime. Like they okay. don't look very. They don't look very good. So I do need to get time to practice that sort of thing. Um, you know, because I know I would get more work if I could draw, you know, in a, in a big NASCATs, you know, the humans. But if you give me like a Disney princess, I could draw that, yeah, or like animated 
animated people I can draw. I yeah. can understand that structure. For some reason, I cannot apply that to drawing people. And I don't hmm. know why. So you could draw, like, if I asked you to draw Belle, you could draw Belle. But I, if I asked you to draw a chick in her mid-20s, you couldn't do that? No. Don't ask me. I don't know. But you could do Belle. Wow. Yeah. But, like, my brain doesn't. If you ask me to draw a Disney character, there's a whole list of references for that. Got it. But like if yeah. I gotta pull if I gotta pull some random design out of my brain, it it's just like, oh well, well, you know, like yeah, but I can draw like little chibi people, little anime style. I can do that. I've done yeah. that a bunch. I did that for a bunch of little uh things, but like Samurai it, Pizza Cats, yeah. Oh my god. Um there you go. what the hell was the one? SWAT cats. SWAT cats. <laughs> For well, Biker Mice from Mars, I saw that was making a comeback somewhere too. Yeah, that's the Nacelliverse. That was yeah. actually my favorite read from this past week. The Nacelliverse was amazing. I hope I'm saying really? that right. Yeah. Do you remember really Street good. Sharks? Yeah, Street Sharks. Holy, the 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 they had the that were out when we were kids. Yes, they had the and like the Cowboy Moo Town, the cows, the cows, mm -hmm. you know, from Road Rovers. That there was, was all cool kinds show. of weird stuff. Anth anthropomorphic animals. You yeah. know, are that's just, your jam? Just my jam. Like they, anything that has like a animal a doing something, them. even yeah. if they have like, even if they have hands. Like everybody always says, hands are hard to draw. I do it, and I mean, I think feet are hard to draw. So you yeah. know, you and Rob Liefeld. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm in decent company. Then I guess I don't know. Yeah. I don't draw enough pouches on uh, these cats, though. No, you need to pouch them up. Either. Yeah, yeah, they need to have like utility belts and more yeah, muscles. Definitely, Probably definitely. more muscles. Well, I'm trying to think like you know because I have to come yes. up with different character designs for these cats, and I'm like, dude, you know, what trope are we doing? So you should like, do a Liefeld version, Liefeld out cat. <laughs> that yeah. would be hilarious. Just like you know, Easter no egg, one, you know, like or you know, there's a toy of Deadpool somewhere in the with no feet on it, and yeah. it just looks like you know the nubs. Like, it's a catnip toy that got chewed up. <laughs> <Got no feet. laughs> there you go. You know, but stuff like that. I don't know if you remember, but like at Christmas time, I posted a, um, a stray dogs picture that we did that Tony and I did that had a bunch of, it had the dogs laying around in the living room and there was like a pretty scene. And, um, but there were little Easter eggs, little toys of all the different image characters at the time. Oh, and nice. so, you know, we had fawn and we did like, you know, oh. um, I think whatever, whatever was popular at the time we did, like little yeah. toys of all of them and so i want to do that with cats i hope we get to do that this time i hope we get to do something for christmas that would be rad yeah that sounds fun yeah i mean whenever we can like inter just just inject a bit of fun into stuff like that's my that's i love it so that's you know that's why i'm on the team i just keep things light <laughs> yeah hey it, it works really well and mm -hmm. um people want it they buy your product, they love it, and they need we we need you to play with us in the comic world. I pitched a True. funny gag, like a one page gag, for Tony to use whenever like he feels a story getting too heavy. I hope he uses it one day. But it was like a, based on that meme, like you know how you can just call a cat, and it was just like, hey, you know, cat, cat, you try and get a cat's attention, but he doesn't look at you, and you mm -hmm. go, pss, 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 and he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's basically the bit where a dog is trying to get the cat's attention so they can run, but yeah. like the cat's just like, you know, not looking listening. off, looking around, and he goes, pss, pss. he goes, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Awesome. I like that. <laughs> and then cat loses. Oh, we're running now. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cracking me up. I all just, right. you know, musical. Nice. I want to get internet memes. I, I mean, like that's like I'm I'm trying to like fit tropes in where I can. Could cat you do memes. work in maybe like an amber turd with a feral cat that left the turd? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there's just, there's so much to work with. There. There's a lot. You mm. know, uh, the, let's see, well, what's been my most recent thing? I'm, I, I drew like a couple of different, because I'm trying to make a, a set of stickers to take to like conventions and stuff. Because I don't have anything. Like, I don't have anything anymore. I'm trying to do, like, mini prints. I made these keychains. Yeah, little... you, need, you need some uh -huh. merch. You definitely need merch. Cute. Yeah, they swag. They're all in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to bring you to C2E2. That's um, cute. You want all the merch. Like, yeah, I don't have a lot of 
like ideas for stuff that's easy to transport because you know i don't really fly too much so i'm not used to having to check a bag or do anything it's you know uh anyway uh i think that um i oh, think yeah. that it is probably time for us to get going but it has been really cool hanging out and i do need to come back because this is like so much fun i just like nerding out good i didn't even really talk about the book too much but you know the book's rad I mean, we talked about fun, the cats. We had fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had fun. That's part of it. And I would love to see you come back on Scotty's channel so we can do some some nerding out because this is like I could go on a trope about how animated animation doesn't get the appreciation that it deserves. I'm just well, like, even the animated Lord of the Rings was so good. good. Like the, the Fox, she did a. Yeah, I know. I even I think I have a cell like a like a cell from the old ones. Laying, it's not laying around here anywhere. I believe it's like packed up nicely. Uh, I got a bunch of cells off of eBay. It was just like a group of That's them. That's awesome. And it wasn't like they all weren't from the same thing. Yeah. Um. So it was. That's you cool. Know. I can't wait to like get out there more, do the things that I didn't get to do during Stray Dogs, which is go to conventions, do these like podcastings, do more interviews, signings, stuff like that. I didn't get to do any of that with Stray Dogs because. COVID. So it was a weird time. Yeah, it was well, a weird time. Hopefully I'm not so a good. not an anomaly. And and you know that hopefully we never get locked down again, but you know. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully not. But yeah, I'm so glad that you were able to uh spend time with us this evening. I'm very grateful for you. It's been a lot of fun. Um I wish you all the success in the world on your new title feral that drops this wednesday everybody that's watching go pick it up if you don't already have plans to pick it up go out and grab a copy it's gonna be awesome um but thank you so much for hanging out with us um feral you guys check it out it drops this wednesday in stores that's the cover a be sure to go oh pick this up is copy. actually the one per store variant but oh that's the one per store don't yeah, listen to me preview. don't listen to and it's not cover a <laughs> that's the one per store yeah this one is good the the preview variant that that got sent out it's got all, so this, much, like, all of this like gobbledygook on the back we but, love it yeah yeah in stores good luck inside. and and i'm glad and we'll talk again i want to come back we'll we'll yes. be nerd out some more about other stuff absolutely <laughs> yeah thank you so much and thank you caroline for coming to hang out and having my back so much fun getting to hang out with you again thank you guys in the ch chat thank you all for coming to hang out with us tonight it's been so much fun. We'll leave you how we always do with a little bit of some Biggie Shack. I'll see you guys next week with Sonya Saturday. Later, guys. I'd say that one is a banger, man. It's a real certified banger, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>